How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and men and women, and boys and girls, and people, and my friends abundant everywhere? I am Professor Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business, and we are talking about Bernoulli, and I'm going to show you a most remarkable thing, and it goes like this. Supposing I have a pipe that is delivering a stream of air vertically, and the ball is supported there in the stream. One would now be able to say, and it would be right, that the air pushes up and the ball pushes down by virtue of its weight, and those are equal and the ball stays there. But now if I turn the stream of air off the vertical and I have a ball stay there, ho ho, should not the ball fall down? Indeed it should. Reason dictates that it should fall down. But my philosophy is this. Nature often ravages reason. I'm going to show you that I can put the stream of air off the vertical. Indeed, in this little car, I can do it. Let me do it again, and we will see how much off the vertical, but I'll do it in a much larger scale. Watch it. That's quite a bit off the vertical. Now come with me to another place in my castle, and I will show you the ball so behaving. Ball, a light one indeed, but I could do it with a heavy one, with a stream sharp enough and heavy enough. Now I'm going to go off the vertical. And the ball is spinning, which is significant, and I'm running out of air again, so we shall have to return to this. But are you not agreed that this is an incredible thing to witness? By way of commentary, <clears throat> the ball is in general spinning this way. The stream of air passes over here. This gives rise to a reduction in pressure, and the atmosphere holds the ball up. And that is why we can throw a curve, which I shall do in another program. But first, I am diverted for a moment's uh, contemplation with you. <clears throat> I need a drink of water. I'm tightening up a little bit in my vocal mechanism. And I am led to say as follows. Imagine the marvelous nature of this stuff. Two gases, two gases, hydrogen and oxygen, when put together in proper measure by the forces of nature, necessary for my mechanism, water, water. Or consider the following, more to consider too, some salt, two, two things, sodium, and chlorine. Each alone would put me to death. Sodium, oh, terrible for my system, and chlorine would put me to sleep forever. But when put together in their proper constitution, they are also necessary for my mechanism. So are we not agreed, people, that everything, however trivial, is worthy of our contemplation because they are wonderful to consider. As an illustration, imagine a seed of a radish put in the earth here and the seed of a carrot put in the earth next to it. And what emerges from their growth? The carrot becomes the carrot and what else the other is, it so becomes. And so things beget themselves in the proper way with nature. And I thank you for watching.